So within Amazon S3, you can set a course configuration uh, for your bucket. And this is specifically for static website hosting. So then when you are trying to access resources from another domain, like let's say you're accessing JavaScript assets or something, that you're gonna be able to actually download them, execute them on the client side of your browser. So the idea is that this course configuration file can be in either JSON or XML. Um, in the AWS console, it only shows JSON. And this XML, it used to be in the console, they got rid of it. Um, it suggested that you can still set it, but when you look at AWS CLI, you're only still showing uh, JSON uh, options. I know it used to be XML, but I can't find a way to upload XML anymore. Um, this stuff is pretty standardized. It's not specific to AWS. When you're configuring uh, cores, the XML will always pretty much look the same, but let's take a look on the right-hand side and see what we are doing. So we're saying allow all headers for put, post, and delete methods for this specific origin. And then the next one we're saying for allow all headers for put, post, delete for this other uh, domain so that we could be getting resources from these two different locations. And then down below, we're saying, uh, we're not specifying any headers to be allowed, but we're saying, let's get, uh, let, let's let us uh, be able to get anything from anywhere. And generally you don't want to use this asterisk here for the wildcard as it would negate the protection of cores because you'd be saying, hey, uh, I don't want to have any cores protection, but a lot of times in development, you will set this. And then once you uh, have cores working, you'll narrow it down and make sure it works. So I, I just would say in production, you would not necessarily want to have a wild card there. But yeah, there you go.